Hey there brothers and sisters, it's Timothy here. I am in the final week of a 12 week programme by Ben Patrick aka Knees Over Toes Guy of his first of three programmes called Zero. Now the goal of Zero and of Ben's programmes is all about bulletproofing the knees, bulletproofing the lower body and so the session he lays out, you do it three times a week. Um, I've signed up online, I'm not going to give away the session here but I'm going to go, what I want to do is share some of the movements that he's put in the course and it, it's, I do think it's an incredible course and I'm going to do a full 12 week review uh, shortly on this channel as well. So in this video I want to share with you just a few uh, tweaks that I make occasionally to the way I, I follow the program just to maximize what I'm getting out of it for myself. I've had uh, three knee surgeries in the past but more recently I've had chronic ankle issues that have really been bothering me, chronic uh, Achilles tendonitis plantar fasciitis and so there's a few things I've had to do differently along in the course so as not to stress my ankles to make it a bit easier on my body uh, and so I can get the most out of it. So this is a video for anyone else who may have ankle issues going in. It has helped people with ankle issues as he's prescribed it. For me there was a few things, it really helped my knees, not so much with some other areas, the ankles. So <clears throat> there's a few tweaks I've made so that this video is just to help you guys and just to give you ideas if you are following the course and you want to mix it up slightly but still target those same areas hopefully you get some ideas out of this video enjoy first things off I like to use these in my toes um, again not for every session but for some of the sessions when I spread the toes the way they were naturally designed to function I get more uh, access out of the, the muscle in my shin the tibialis anterior um, and that's noticeable and then up into the patella tendon, sometimes I feel the difference that these, these make to that, especially for squatting and, and those kind of movements. So the first addition I would add to it occasionally is these toe spreaders. The next addition I'll add to quite a few of the movements, the, the Poliquin step up, the ATG split squat, is the WEC step. And now what I suffer from, as do I think many of the people, is this inside ankle bone collapse. Um, from years of impact sports with uh, non-optimized biomechanics or not focused about form, just landing how the body wanted to land and you know cushion shoes and all of that. And a lot of us have this collapsing inside ankle bone. Um, if you look from behind, and what this the wet step does or the sole step as they've now named it, is it stops you collapsing in on the inside of your ankle bone. So it lifts your inside ankle bone. So then the rest of your the muscles upstream from your ankle aren't affected by this issue so it can correct it from upstream and that then helps to strengthen it in the correct position. So I can use the WEC step in pretty much every exercise if I wanted so like one in three times I'll introduce a WEC step just so that my body gets some training in the, in the most optimum position as well as strengthening while it's in the weak position. Another tool I like to use, this was like £12 on Amazon, it's just kind of an ankle stability block. Um, what I found this really helps me with um, some of the calf raises as it gives you that gentle rock in motion. So it was, it was a lot of strain on my ankle just doing these calf raises, essentially single leg calf raises, whereas with this it kind of mimics that running motion of the roll into the lift, but it makes it, it's kind of like landing the plane, it's a lot gentler. So I used it on the calf raises, even on the tibialis raises as well. When you drive the heel and lift, I felt like able to get more length of muscle activated from the down position to lifting the toes up. So I like to mix it up sometimes as well with the stability board because this allows you to add motion to the lift. You can, the, the more you put the heel in the center of the board, the more your shin is working. If you put it here, then it's you just drive the heel down, but the more you can pinpoint the heel to the center, the more you feel the shin working through a fuller range of motion. So, for me, I really like that as a, an additional, just to mix it up so we're not just hitting the muscle the exact same way every time. I'm trying to get a full scope of the muscles in that tip, as in try and get top to bottom as much as possible. This was a useful tool just to play with. Um, even on, occasionally I played with it on the, the split squat, just to work that stability with the WEC step. Um, but this, yeah, this paired with this, just for ankle stability. I'm gonna do a separate video on that, but um, 
I did find this was a useful tool, um, as I say, just for mixing up some sets with it, some sets without it. It was a nice addition and was able to access more of the muscle on some of the sets. Additionally, these yoga blocks, which I'm sitting on, um, I found were a great tool because then I was able to alter for the split squats, the knees over toes split squats. I could start with a higher position on three blocks and then as the sets went on, I could drop down and slowly get lower. Um, I found that a lot better than if I was just using stairs. You know, the drops, one step is a drop of three or four of them. Whereas this, I can get into the nitty gritty and the fine details of, you know, every inch matters. Um, and so I used it for that, as well as doing the sissy squats, the knees over toes together, sissy squats. I could set them up and then each set I could drop down in between using the wet steps and dropping down. Um, I just found these thin yoga blocks to be such a useful tool. They're stable, strong, um, and they've been very handy the whole way through the course. I also found that pairing things like these um, for the elephant walks was really good at getting some extra hamstring activation. I think when we're, we're just stood on flat floor, um, you can certainly get a good stretch and quad activation as you, as you tense each time. But that just adds an extra element of stability, which kind of felt like it called upon more muscles in the hamstring. So I was able to just get a little more activation. You know, every two or three sets, I just I do it on that um, for stability. Just finished my workout. As I said, this is my final week of that first of three stages, the zero program, week 12, in the books for me. Stay tuned for that full zero program review coming very soon. But I just wanted to get this video out there to share with you guys if you're looking for a strength program to complement the rope for me the rope is very much quite software based in the body it's programming these patterns of good movement into the body especially the upper body now if we can bulletproof the body and do the correct strength training alongside that then you're onto a winner athletically you can maximize your athletic potential and honestly there's not many programs out there that get my full stamp of approval like what Athletic Truth Group have created here, what they've already created and what I imagine they're creating going forward with Ben Patrick and Keegan Smith. Both guys I really look up to doing amazing work. Um, so I just wanted to shed some light on that program, share how I'm tweaking it slightly for myself just to maximize those, those gains and, and just those, add those little bits. Not that it's not already a, a great program as it is, it really is, um, but it's just those little nuanced bits that I like to play with myself. Uh, as an explorer. Um, so hopefully that's helped you in some way. But yeah, stay tuned for that video. Subscribe for more content and see you in the next one. Peace.